saw a fist and an arm come across my right shoulder. And uh, I heard and saw a closed fist um, contact Mr. Depp in the left side of his face. And whose fist was that? That was Miss Heard's fist. You saw Mr. Depp uh, push or shove Whitney Heard, correct? Absolutely not. And it was only after Mr. Depp pushed Whitney that Amber stepped forward and punched him in the face. Isn't that right? That is not correct. Did you form any opinions with respect to Ms. Heard? I did. Borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. We have breakfast. We got breakfast. We got breakfast here. We got some hash browns. Huh? Look at that. We got pancakes. Vegan pancakes. This is plant-based pancakes. This is oatmeal pancakes. And then we got fries. But I'm excited. Wow, you know. You know what I noticed? You know, my wife and I, uh, we've been um, watching these uh, Amber, Amber Heard, um, Johnny Depp uh, trials. And you know what I think? I think that these Amber Heard, the, the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp trials, I believe is like Bible study. It really is like Bible study if you really think of it. It's like Bible study because what they're doing is, is they're they're investigating, right? They're inve that's how that's what Bible study is. They're investigating. And if you if you got the chance to watch some of these uh, some of, some of the you know the clips of the trial, it's very fascinating, very fascinating. But let's eat real quick. That was my uh, B-roll attempt. <laughs> and now let's see how good this tastes. Mm. Yeah, I gotta admit, <clears throat> the B-roll of the pancakes sucks. And I'm talking about the B-roll when I, when I shot the footage of the pancakes. It sucked, but hey. Hey. I'm hungry and I don't want to take my time doing B-rolls, so. Hello, Mr. Kepa. Hey, how you doing? Doing good, Mr. Kepa, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good. So basically, the two codes that we're getting, one of them we were getting already from um, from the system had to do with that um, steering angle sensor that we had talked about last time. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did check that it is available now this time. And then the other code that also in the system, um, it has to do with your catalytic converters. Uh, they're basically low in efficiency. All right. And then uh, how, how long would it take to um, to get everything done? Um, everything is available. Um, catalytic, catalytic converters, if I order them today, I'll have them by the end of the day. Okay. And uh, we could you know, potentially get all this done for you by tomorrow. Oh, awesome. So I have the... Um, the oil changed um, synthetic 8209. Uh, the catalytic converter, there's two of them. There's a left and a right. Um, parts and labor for them is 112260. Okay. The steering angle sensor um, that goes on the steering column, uh, 41678 for that, that's parts and labor. Okay. So right now it's giving a total of uh, 176577 for this. Like I said, the bulb is just a little bulb down in the corner. Um, that's pretty much dead. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's, um, that, that'll be fine. Yeah. I'll go ahead and take care of this for you. And then um, I will call you tomorrow to give you an update and then go from there. Okay. Thank you so much. Awesome. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Oh boy, I was hoping that it wasn't over a thousand dollars, but it's well over a thousand dollars. So seventeen hundred, uh, a little bit over seventeen hundred. Oh 
man. <laughs> this trip is costing us more than I thought. Um, but it's all right. So anyways, what I was saying. So we were talking about the if you if you if you have seen the footage or the the trials that uh, that has been happening between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard and and how the lawyers are asking all these questions and uh, they're trying to get to the bottom of things they're trying to get to the truth and they're asking sometimes when I, I hear some some things that they say or they ask and I'm like how is that even um, related to the issue right but but I, I, I get I you know I get it like I, I get why she's asking these questions the seemingly irrelevant questions right um, and that's kind of how we also do it with the Bible that's how I do it with the Bible when I when I read some things in the Bible like let's say you know we can go to uh, my favorite uh, one of my favorite books in the Bible which is Revelation um, we go to uh, Revelation and verse Revelation 13 you know what I mean like this is actually by the way my Bible it's all it's all marked up if you go to Revelation 13 it talks about a beast that rides upon it talks about a beast that rises up on the sea and then when you get that picture, you don't just form an opinion uh, just with that picture. Just like how in the trials that, you know, they're, they're asking a bunch of questions because they don't want to form an opinion based off of one thing that the person says, right? They're always asking questions just to get to the bottom of this so that they can, they can collectively get all the information that they need in order to come up with a conclusion. And so that's the same thing with Bible Bible study. We got to ask a whole bunch of questions. We can't just say, oh, the mark of the beast is the microchip or the mark of the beast is a tattoo or the beast is Putin or the beast is uh, tr Donald Trump or the Antichrist is um, so on and so forth, right? We can't just do these things. We can't just like read one thing and then that's it. We can't just do that. We got to read this and because it doesn't give us a definition of the thing that we're reading, then we got to go elsewhere. We got to ask more questions and go elsewhere to see what, what, what um, if the if this thing explains what this is saying here. If there's anything else in the Bible that, that explains this. For example, it I, I give this example all the time. Uh, Revelation 13 talks about a beast that sits upon a sea. Okay, well... What is a beast? Who is that beast? What is the characteristics of the beast? Of that beast? How many horns does it have? Why does it have those horns? What does horn mean? Um, how come it has? Uh, how come the horns have crowns on them? How come? How come? It, how come the beast only has seven heads but ten horns? So, so these are things that we have to ask. Uh, in order for us to get to the bottom and uh, to get to the conclusion of the whole thing and not just like oh it's a beast okay so let's see it's got to be russia no we can't do that right we can't do that because then we're not we're not it's kind of disrespectful to the word of god we're not actually digging we're not actually looking we have to be like those lawyers they ha they ask multiple questions and multiple questions because they know that the jury is watching and if they don't ask these questions then the jury will know they will sniff out the fact that this person this lawyer is not doing his job right so we have to be like that we ha we got to we have to dig we have well what is what does it mean what is, what does beast mean well let's go to daniel 7 if you go to daniel 7 da daniel 7 tells you what a beast is Watch. Let's go to Daniel 7 and verse 20, uh, verse 17. Daniel 7 and verse 17 says, um, These great beasts, which are four, are four kings that shall arise out of the earth. Okay? So a beast is a king, it says. Or it can be a kingdom because a kingdom, a king cannot have a king. A king is not a king without a kingdom, and a kingdom is not a kingdom without a king, right? And then it says in verse 23, Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom. So, so now we have some clues. Now we have some definitions. Now we can definitely say a beast is a king or a kingdom because the witness, Daniel, said so. John was the first witness, right? John was the, well, actually John was a, a later witness. John says, uh, in, in verse in chapter 13 of Revelation that there is a beast 
Well, let's call in another witness. Let's call in Daniel. What is a beast, Daniel? Daniel says in, in verse 17 of chapter 7 that a beast is a king or a kingdom. That's in verse 17 and verse 23. Well, now it says that this beast uh, 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 is sitting on the sea. This beast rises up out of the sea. Well, what is the sea? Now, now that we know what the beast is, what is the sea? Let's go to um, Revelation 17. It says, Revelation 17 and verse 15, And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean that this waters, that is, this is talking about, is the sea. That is talking about in Revelation 13. Well, now we have to do a little bit, uh, a little bit of digging. Revelation 13 talks about a beast that rises up out of the sea. It has seven heads and ten horns, right? In Daniel 7, in Revelation 17. In Revelation 17, and verse, we can start in verse 1. It says, I will show you, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great horde that sits, uh, that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of the names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. It's the same beast. Is the same beast and this woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls and having a golden cup in her hands full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication so this woman this whore this harlot was sitting on top of the beast and we know that this beast was on top of the sea right according to revelation 13. so then the woman is also sitting on top of the sea because the woman is sitting on the beast that's sitting on top of the sea. So the woman is sitting then on the waters. And what does the waters represent? Verse 15 says, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. That's a condensely populated area. A densely populated area. So now if you go back to Revelation 13, we now know what a beast is because we we have a we, we have a second witness for that. That's Daniel, and now we we know what a sea what the sea represents, because we have another witness for that, and that's Revelation 17. The angel says, the angel of Revelation 17 told us that the sea or the waters is peoples, multitudes, and nations and tongues. So we have to get into this habit of asking questions, asking multiple questions asking multiple questions to see what is the truth. We can't just form an opinion from one statement. We gotta go and look at the truth and, and dig deep. So it's really fascinating how it kind of plays out in the uh, in these trials with Johnny Depp and, and Amber Heard. It, it plays out like how, how they are asking all these questions, multiple questions, because they don't wanna form an opinion uh, or a conclusion based off someone, uh, someone, someone's one statement about something. They have to call in multiple witnesses, multiple witnesses, just like we do. We have multiple witnesses, 66 books in the Bible. We have multiple witnesses to, to, to conclude one thing. We have multiple witnesses, multiple, multiple. So that's what I've learned from, from I mean, it's, I think it's so fascinating. If we, imagine if, Imagine if we were, um, you know, if we were like the, the lawyer, right? If we were the lawyer and uh, we were trying to prove something, right? And we call in to stand all these different uh, witnesses, Daniel and John and maybe Peter and, and Paul, calling them to the, calling them to the, to, stand, uh, to the stand and asking them these questions and they would spit out verses at us. Right? Well, Daniel, what does be what what does a beast mean? And he'll he'll say, you know, he'll say a beast is a king or a kingdom, right? And then you go to to, to, to the angel, um, the uh, the angel in Revelation 17 is also a witness, and you call him to the stand and say, hey, angel, what is this? What does a sea symbolize? And he'll tell you the sea is what the waters is what the peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Imagine that. Imagine if we can do that. But that's kind of how it is with Bible study. That's kind of how it is. So that's what I've learned. That well, that's kind of how what I've been noticing, especially with this, with the whole, uh, not just with the Amber Heard and and Johnny Depp trials, but also just with 
the, 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 you know, the court system in general is just, I don't know, it's just fascinating to me. What do you guys think about that? What do you guys think? Let me know what you guys think. Comment down below. Thank you guys for watching. Um, of course, please subscribe if you guys have not yet. Um, like and share this video. And if you uh, are inspired by our videos and documentaries, please um, pray for us and also donate at schoolforprofits.tv. Help us out. Link is in the description box. Thank you guys again. Praise God always. We will see you guys soon. Peace.